hey welcome back to the lecture in the previous lecture you understood about just compiling a single file using the cross compiler and mentioning few mandatory arguments in this lecture let's understand how we can automate the build system using makefile in the makefile you can mention the steps or receipts of your build uh, system then you can use the make command or make tool to execute those receipts what you have written in the make file make command works upon make file they both work together so the make command executes those receipts or instruction what you have written in the make file that's why it's very important to create a proper make file first let me open one text document and let's start writing the make file it is very simple first let's create some variables let me create a variable called cc that stands for cross compiler cc is equal to first let me fill this variable with the cross compiler name the cross compiler name is arm nun eabi gcc this is a variable i am filling this variable with this value everywhere instead of using this i can just use this variable name after that i am going to create one more variable c flags which stands for compiler flags or compiler options and i am going to initialize this with my compiler flags or options what we used in the previous video like hyphen c space m cpu is equal to cortex m4 again you can create one more variable here called machine is equal to cortex m4 here you can just mention dollar sign of you have to create parenthesis and inside that you have to mention this variable this will be expanded to its value so this is like saying value of this variable after that hyphen am thumb after that you can also mention the c standard we can explore that c standard you can go to options controlling dialect you can explore this and here you can explore std determine the language standard because c has many standards like c89 c90 c99 c11 which is the latest one one among these options you can select so the compiler will compile your code against that standard let's use gnu 11 which is nothing but gnu dialect of iso c11 when you use this option this is nothing but it is iso c11 standard with added features from the gnu that's why it is called as GNU 11. Let's use this. You can control the optimization by using the capital O. By default, code is not optimized. That's why you need not to actually mention this option. You can omit that because we are not looking for any optimization in this exercise. Or you can be sure with no optimization by just mentioning hyphen capital O zero that means no optimization these are the compile flags that is sufficient and after that let's create the target now we have to mention the target dependencies and the receive let's say i want to create main.o from main.c main.o becomes my target so you have to give colon then mention the dependency to make main.o i need main.c this is a dependency after that this is a combination of target and dependency and after that you have to mention the receive hit enter and give a tab that is very important a receive must be followed by a tab that's why you should give tab the receipt is a command a command 
to create main.o from main.c. Let's do that. What's the command? Dollar of cc. That's our compiler. After that, let's mention the compile flag. So dollar sign c flags. And after that, hyphen o, the output file. That is nothing but the target. Let's mention the target here. Or you can do like this. You can do minus C hyphen O main dot O. You can write like this. Instead of writing this, what you can do is there is a shortcut. Since it's a dependency, you can replace this with so dollar sign caret symbol. This means dependency. The target you can replace by dollar sign at. We just created our first target and uh, this is a receipt for this target. So instead of writing like this, you can also write like this. Let's keep the hyphen O this side and the target. This is the input file. That's a dependency. This is a target. This is also fine. Let's save this. I'm going to save as in my workspace as a make file. Yeah, make file. And let's give the name make file. M should be capital. Let's save this. Let's go back and let's try to execute make. You will see that there is no command like make. We have to install this command now. That's why just search for make for windows. So you will get GNU Win32 project that is make for windows. If you are using Linux or Mac, then it should be available for your machine. You need not to do this. This is I'm teaching only for windows because it is not natively available. Here, click on setup program and you should be able to download that. Let's execute this. And here is a path. That's okay. Go back and let's try make. Yes, it is not recognized. No problem. What we can do is we can go to the installation folder, which is right here, and go to bin. Here is a make. What you do is you copy this path, then go to this PC here and go to properties, go to advanced system settings environment variables select path click on edit new and paste that path which is pointing towards bin click ok 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 close this let's restart this let's close this command prompt and let's open again let's type make you can see that now it is recognized. Let's get into our folder. Here, let's just type make. Here you can see that it says main.o is up to date. Let's do one thing. Let's remove these files. Let's delete these main.o and main.s and also ld.o. Let's remove all these files. And let's try make once again. Here you can see that we just executed our first receipt which generated main.o by taking main.c complete up to here and we will keep improving our make file to include more targets and the receipts in the previous video we explored about compiling a source file and we generated the .o file for a source file as i said a .o file is called as a relocatable object file in this video, we are going to explore what exactly is a 
relocatable object file. Why it is called as relocatable? First of all, the main.o file which is created in our case is in the ELF format that is executable and linkable format. ELF is nothing but a file format for object files and executable files when you use GCC. A file format standard describes a way of organizing various elements of a program. What are the various elements of a program? If you have a program, then your program contains uh, data, it contains read-only data, what we call as constants, code, uninitialized data, and various other things. A standard is nothing but it describes a way of organizing these uh, data and code in a file that is governed by the ELF standard. There are many other file formats. For example, COF, that is the common object file format which is introduced by Unix System 5. If you are using ARM CC compiler, then the compiler uses a file format standard which is introduced by ARM, that is ARM image format, AIF. And uh, there is also uh, one more file format called S record, which is introduced by Motorola. There are various other file formats to uh, represent object file and executable. But since we are using uh, GNU based compilers here, the compiler follows executable and linkable format. By using that executable and linkable format, you can create other formats like you can create dot bin or intel hex and so many other things so what main dot o contains mainly machine specific code and the data data of the program it doesn't contain any absolute addresses for data and code of the program let's explore main dot o by running some uh, object file analyzing tools let's get into the command prompt let's get into the workspace and now let's run some command in order to analyze the object file, you can use the command arm nun ebi object dump. This command helps us to dump the contents of the object file. If you just run this command, it shows uh, what are the options you have to use uh, with this command. For example, let's just use, uh, let's say, h, which displays different sections of the object file. I would use minus h and the file name main.o here it is as i said this is in the elf format you can see that the file format is elf32 and little endian and this is for arm these are the various sections of this file that is a dot text section this section holds the code or instructions of the program and this section holds the data, especially it is initialized data. And this section holds all uninitialized data. This section holds the read-only data of the program. And these are some of the sections which are added by the compiler. For us, we should care about these sections because we have the control to influence these sections. These are some of the standard sections of the ELF standard. Apart from these sections, you can add your own uh, user-defined sections and that we'll see in the later lectures. Let's observe the text section. For that, you have to use some other options. Here I can use the option hyphen D that stands for display assembler contents of executable section. What I would do is I would just use minus D main.o and I will redirect the output to some file let's say main underscore log here it is main underscore log and let me open this here it is this command helps us to understand uh, various assembly level instructions generated for different functions of our program these are the assembly instructions generated for the main function. And this is for idle task function. This is for the task handler one. And you can see that by using this command, 
we can disassemble the object file to observe various instructions generated for different functions of our program. All these are part of dot text section. We can see that disassembly of dot text section. What's the size? The total size of the text section is this much. If I convert that into hex, so it would be 4e8. The text section consumes a 1.2 kilobytes of code memory space. And you can see that the data section is only one byte. Let's run some more commands. Use the same command with different arguments. Let me use the option hyphen s, uh, full contents. Display the full contents of all sections requested. So here it is. This displays uh, contents of different sections of the ELF file. These are the contents of dot text section which is nothing but collection of off codes these are the machine instructions or off codes let's take a look into the contents of section dot data here you can see that dot data section consumes only one data the size is just one byte later i will explain how data is segregated between uh, different sections like dot data dot ro data uh, dot bss etc there are different types of data like as I mentioned earlier, constant data, initialized data, uninitialized data. So all those data go to different sections. I will explain that later. Take a look into RO data, that is read-only data. This section consumes all these data. These are constant data of a program. And these are some of the comments or some metadata added by the compiler. We need not to worry about that. You can even run one more command, a hyphen capital D, and then redirect this output to log. This command helps you to get the disassembly of all the sections. Usually we use the word disassembly to only text section. But uh, this command helps you to uh, observe uh, various other sections. Let's say I have dot text, search for dot data here, which is right here you can see that the dot data section has this variable value that is current task this is a global variable and that global variable is part of dot data section why we'll see that later because i will explain different types of data in later videos here you can see that there is one more section called dot bss and this variable global tick count is part of dot bss why global tick count variable is not part of dot data and why it is part of dot bss that is the important thing what we need to understand and we'll do that in the later lectures here it is these are the contents of dot uh, ro data these are the constant data the compiler automatically translates uh, these things as commands when you are looking at data sections don't give attention to these assembly instructions because this is just a translation what the compiler did for these data these are not true instructions i mean these uh, data section that is dot data dot basis ro data they have data they don't have any instructions remember why you see instruction here because we ran disassembly command what that command tries to do is it sees every number as an off code and it tries to map that to an instruction. So that's the reason why you are seeing here uh, instruction. Basically, this section doesn't contain any instruction. All these sections, they contain data. After that, this comment section and attribute section, those are added by the compiler. Why it is called as relocatable object file? Let's take an example of our main function. These are the instructions generated for the main function. And these are the opcodes. This opcode is placed at this address with an offset of 0. And this opcode is placed at this address with an offset of 2. Like that, the offset is maintained. The next function is idle task. And this offset is continued here. Treating this as the address of this function. 
this address is relocatable this address is not an absolute address you should mention the appropriate address here and you do that by using the link object because in our microcontroller the code space starts from 0 cross 0 8 0 0 0 0 0 0 the code space doesn't start from this address that's the reason why it is called as relocatable sections you have to relocate these sections or these op codes to some other addresses as per your microcontroller address map let's say i compile one more file let me open the make file let me add one more uh, target here let's say i call it as ld.o and i would call led.c after that i add one more target here make all colon the dependencies are main.o and led.o when i run make all the make command will try to resolve the dependencies the dependencies are main.o and ld.o that's why it is going to compile all these subsequent targets main.o and ld.o let's try this make all now you can see that i got ld.o let's disassemble ld.o so led log let me open this ld here you can see that this is a disassembly of ld.o and uh, here is a dot text section of led.o here you can see that the base address is zero again in the case of main.o also uh, dot text started at the address zero that means the dot text section of both the files are located at the address zero that means there is a conflict then the opcode of both these files will go into the same address that's not possible that will create a conflict isn't it that's the reason you should relocate them and we do that by using the linker script and by assigning the relocatable address to this section the relocatable address you have to decide based on your microcontroller or processor memory map that we'll see later in every object file, you can see that the base address is selected as zero. From there, the offset is counted. For example, if you go to the data section, it doesn't have any data. In the main, so if you go to the data section, you can see that again, the base address of the data section is selected as zero. That's not true. You have to relocate this to some appropriate address you can see that dot bss also has the base address of zero ro data also has zero you have to assign correct or absolute address to these different sections of the dot o file then only your program will run properly in the next lecture we'll discuss code and different data of the program and i'll see you in the next lecture